Welcome, Minister. I again want to just make sure that viewers understand that the Palestinian Authority has been an opponent of Hamas, so you are not in any way affiliated with Hamas. You represent the Palestinian Authority, uh, which has control over parts of the West Bank. All that said, what is your reaction to what you have seen so far? Well, first of all, I am not uh, part of the Palestinian Authority, as a matter of fact. I represent a democratic Palestinian movement called Palestinian National Initiative, which is non-Fatah and non-Hamas. And we're, uh, we're uh, of course, I am not affiliated with Hamas. But I think this situation uh, that has evolved is a direct result of the continuation of the longest occupation in modern history. Israeli occupation of Palestinian land since uh, 1967. This is 56 years of occupation that has transformed into a system of apartheid, a much worse apartheid than what prevailed in South Africa. Uh, yes, uh, maybe Hamas did not recognize Israel, but the PLO did and the Palestinian Authority did. What did they get? Nothing. Since 2014, the Israeli governments would not even meet with Palestinians. And what you see today is a reaction to several things. First of all, settlers' terrorist attacks on Palestinians in the West Bank that has evicted already 20 communities in an act of ethnic cleansing. 248 Palestinians who were killed by the Israeli army and settlers in the West Bank, including 40 children. Attacks on the holy sites, the Muslim and Christian holy sites by Israeli extremists, as well as declaration of Netanyahu that he will liquidate the Palestinian rights and the Palestinian cause by normalization with Arab countries. And he dared even to go to the United Nations and carried in the United Nations a map of Israel, which included the whole of the West Bank, all of Gaza, all of Jerusalem, as well as the Golan Heights. He declared the annexation of the occupied territories. So of course, Palestinians turn to resistance because they see that this is the only way for them to get their rights. The question here is not about dehumanizing Palestinians as is happening and calling them terrorists. It's about asking the question, why the United States supports Ukraine in fighting what they call occupation, while here they are supporting the occupier who continues to occupy us? But, but let me ask you, if, the, if that is the, the analogy you wish to draw, um, the, what Hamas is doing is they're targeting Israeli civilians, women, children, grandmothers. No, they are not. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that not a classic terror? Isn't that classic terrorism? They're not fighting the Israeli government. They're fighting ordinary people. That's one way of putting it, but it's not true. I think Hamas mainly attacked military establishments, military installations. And most of the people they, they have arrested and uh, taken as uh, pres war, uh, war prisoners are military people. I do not accept attacking any civilian. Uh, uh, I do not accept that Israelis attack our civilians. But look at what Israeli planes are doing now in Gaza. They, they are bombarding houses. They're bringing down to earth, and you've shown, you've shown that on your, uh, on your screen, uh, whole apartments, whole buildings, high-rise buildings are brought down to the ground. And we already are reporting, uh, receiving uh, reports about families who are killed, uh, nine people in one family, 10 people in another family, including children. I do not want any civilian to be hurt, neither by Palestinians or by Israelis. But the question is how to end that. Will it end by attacking Gaza Strip another time? Israel has already conducted five wars on Gaza. One of them lasted 51 days. They destroyed everything. This did not stop Hamas, did not stop resistance. There is one way to stop any violence, and that is to end the Israeli occupation. And that is for the United States to be fair. They cannot say that Israel has the right to defend itself, but we, the Palestinians, don't have the right to defend ourselves. Let me remind you with the case of Shirin Abu Akli, who was not only Palestinian, but also an American, a very peaceful journalist. She was shot to death by an Israeli sniper. Was anybody indicted? Was anybody taken to court? No. 
52 other journalists were also killed. Our first aid providers are shot at. Our doctors are shot at. This should stop. And the only way to stop it is to tell Israel, you have to respect international law. You have to end this illegal occupation and accept Palestinians as equal human beings.